I think I feel it. Yeah, yeah, I got, yeah. It. I got it, I got it. I got a book here. And a top. And a whisk. Ta-da! Morning, Suze. Hello. Good morning, everyone. If you have not already, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, ring the little bell, videos every Tuesday, Friday, and sometimes on occasion, we do the Sunday video. Today, we're with Susie from Oak Hill Vets. Oh, grab this. Hey, girl. I thought this was a little bit better context. So like I said, Susie is here from Oak Hill. We are doing something very special today. When we first got cows in, we used the product on the cow's bed, and I was like, and we got, like I say, one case of mastitis. We're milking 120 cows. We only got one case of mastitis last year because we used this product. Two or three weeks down the line, I had a cow, one, two, two, in calf to sex semen. She got E. coli on a Saturday. We jabbed her up with some Loxycom, some diatrim, a tube, and then in the morning she went a bit worse. She walked into the parlor. We milked her. Loxycom is a pain relief and anti-inflammatory. Uh, took away that pain and a bit of antibiotics as well. And in the morning she wouldn't get up. I gave her another dose of Loxycom, some antibiotics. Uh, stripped her out, in the, out of that quarter, gave her a tube in that quarter. And then by the afternoon, we had James from Oak Hill around. We put a drip onto her and uh, she just went backwards. So it's just a community of things. I rung the vets and spoke to them. He said, what more can I do? And then Susie said, you could have pumped her. I probably pumped her, what, Saturday night when you found the E. coli? Yeah, yeah, as soon as it starts really. With E. coli, when it knocks them sick, main thing is get loads of fluids into them. So we have never done that before. I've never had a loss of a cow before due to E. coli. So that was a massive shock to us, especially being such a good cow. Again, what could we do? Susie said, get a pump. We got one of the select pumps from, who's it from? Nimrod. Nimrod, so we've got a Nimrod pump from here. Susie said, I will show you how to use it. And I was like, cool. So some people would be interested in this as well of how to pump a cow. I've never pumped one before. I bagged them. So when you bag a calf, bag the calf, not a cow, um, you go down the left-hand side, make sure in the stomach. I'm gonna guess it's the same-ish yeah, with this. Yeah, principles. Similar yeah. principles. So what the candidate we have here is 118. She is a sixth or fifth carver. I can check on my app. Let's go here, one second. Seven years old. She is a sixth carver now. Uh, she carved two days ago. She had a bad foot during dry off. She's got a block on, the bandage was put back on about a week ago. She's holding onto a cleansing, which is really annoying. And she has this empty space under your shoes. So the cow's rumen sits on the left-hand side and when their rumen is empty, then quite often you see this dip behind the ribs. So yeah, for her, sheer rumen is a bit empty, so she's not eating as much. She's also a little bit loose at the back end, scouring a little bit, which means she's losing a bit more fluid. So definitely she would really benefit from some oral fluids. And a good candidate to do so. And I thought this was a perfect opportunity to use our new pump for Susie to come and show us how to do. And she is gonna feel so 10 times better from having a pump. First job, what we've got to do? Well, we need to prepare the bucket. You always want to use warm water, get whatever powder you want. Because she's a freshly carved cow, then we'll use the fresh cow sachet just because it's got calcium, magnesium, things that fresh cows really need and we'll help her get going quicker, make her feel much better. I'd get those things sorted first before you even start pumping them. Okay, amazing. Right, warm water. You know when you're talking about treating E. coli mastitis? Oh, I've got one. <laughs> no, it's just... I'm actually filming this. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah. Is it you going to say something important? Well, rather than betamox. And betamox isn't amazing for E. coli, really. Ah, uh, no, I use diatrim. diatrim. Yeah, diatrim is the one. Yeah. So I'm just going to take the beta mox bit out and just put diatrim. And some, pressure, pressure on saying drugs names. It's hard, you know. Yeah. Which yeah. used to be Noradine. Yeah. I, I do half know what I'm talking about. <laughs> How does this go on? There's a white washer, put that. What, that? Yeah, and then just thread that on. Then you don't need to connect it yet because we'll be checking that it's in the right place. This is the bit that's going in through the nose and mouth. And then... This is where we've got Susie here. Fresh cow powder. Look at the size of that thing. Whoa. It's like you've got a big cauldron. So you want a well restrained. Is this well enough? Yes, I'm guessing so a head yoke would be better as well. What is it called? A head lifter? Head, what are oh, they called? A head scoop. Head scoop would be, be even better for this. Yeah, if you've got one that's really thrown its head about, then that can be helpful. But generally, usually as long as their head is trapped, then that's enough and you're able to 
to manage it. I tend to stand at the side of the girl. Is it the same as a car, left side? Yeah, use my hand just so as you can see where my hand's positioned and push up and that makes them open their mouth. Yeah. And then you put the pipe down the middle of the mouth to begin with. Oh, wow. So then it's got to go over the lump on the tongue and then you push it in and then you secure it in place. So we've got the nose clip in. This next bit, we need to see that the pipe is going down the left hand side okay. of the cow because the left hand side is where the esophagus, the food pipe runs. You can hold it there and look. So it is good if you've got the head slightly angled like this. And then she's constantly chewing. Down this, this holy bit here. Yeah, you won't see it that high up, but this bit. Okay, you'll see it is there. Where you'll see it. Okay, come Sometimes on. I even feel it because you should feel it running down. I think I can see it moving. Yeah, yeah, it's there, isn't it? Yeah. So, so what Susie said, sometimes she has another person, so when that person's pushing it in, she can feel it go in the right spot. So you've gone for the middle to start with, and then you've tried to go left, have you? Or you just go um, straight middle the whole time? Well, if you just go straight middle the whole time, because she's chewing, it will automatically just slip to the left-hand okay. side. So you don't need to worry about aiming it too much. And then you gradually push it down, and you either see or you can feel it. Just pass, pass your hand I think there. I feel it. Yeah, yeah, I got, yeah. It, I got it, I got it. That's so cool. Keep pushing it gently in until it just stops. You want it in a good way. So there's only about that, which is maybe about a meter left out. Yeah. And then you lock it in place by just twisting this blue thing to the side there. Yep, so, so then that, won't. that tube stays in, in place. Okay. And then just another check you do is you just put your ear to the side of the pump and you shouldn't feel any breathing on you and you should hear a bit of gurgling um, like stomach or you can sometimes smell the stomach as well and they're just a couple more checks you make to make sure you are in the esophagus of the food pipe rather than the wind pipe, the trachea so when you pump in fluid it goes into the stomach and not into the lungs okay, cool. there you go yeah a little bit of rattling, a little bit of gurgling yeah. I can just correspond to what you do with a calf. There's not a lot of noise there though, is there? You can just, no, it's gonna... because she's having a right good munch on that, you can hear that most of it. You but yeah. Against your chin, so. No, no, no. Great, and then you can pump it. So which one do you use first? So I choose that one. Yeah. So the one with the powder in, and then you can tip the water into that afterwards. To clean your pump out. I've well, seen many yeah. a vet do this. Actually, no, I haven't. But I never have to do this ever. Of course not. <laughs> the only good thing about having a vet is that you don't have to pump. Oh, yeah. I can just That's what all vets say. Well, when vet has um, vet students with them for a week, they're like, oh, look, we've got a automatic pump today. Like that, yeah? Yeah, and then just go slowly to begin with. Just making sure she's comfortable. There she is. If we had it in the wrong area, and where would the, like, the wrong area would be in the airwaves, wouldn't it? Yeah, that's so it. So would we see an immediate reaction after, like, a little bit of pumps? Um, yeah, generally, you would probably see a bit of coughing, a bit of spluttering. If you saw anything like that, then you just would stop, stop. pull the tube back out, just replace it, because you really do not want to put it in the wrong place. But she's tolerating that really well. Cool. It's good. So. She's cutting on it. So yeah. if anyone doesn't know what cutting is when they move the mouth like that. Right. And then I'll tip this in. Do all the vet does. Yeah, pull of it in. And then when you come to the end, yeah, you want to pump a good few pumps of just air. That's it. And then you untwist this so it's unlocked. And then pull it fully out. So you feel a click, so you know the pipe's fully out. And then you just undo the nose clip. And there we go. Nice and full. Nice and full. We'll just put this away. So if we we're in the wrong spot, you can get a stethoscope, can't you? And, and hear it, can you? Is that right? Yeah, so you can. What's that? Yeah, so I, definitely, whenever you pump a cow, I'd always do a couple of checks to make sure you're in the right place. So what we did this time was we felt the pipe to make sure it's going in the, in the right place on the neck. You so, can also see it. Another check you can do is, yeah, you can blow down it. And then if someone's listening with a stethoscope, they can hear it bubbling in the stomach. Okay. Sometimes if you blow down it, it might make it gurgle more back at you and you might get a bit of gut smell. Some people suck on it a bit and there shouldn't be any resistance if you suck on it, the pipe, because the room That's is a massive. brave game. Yeah. It's something I'm not probably gonna do. If I probably don't wash. <laughs> <laughs> no, room and contents doesn't taste very nice. I can imagine it's a bit horrible. <laughs> Say me and Heidi are doing it. We're pumping a cow that we need pumping. Uh, we put our hand there and I don't, Heidi doesn't feel that. 
that would be into her lungs then, will it? It possibly would be, yeah. You would, would you ever feel that and it would be in the wrong places again? No. So no, if you so feel... If you feel it, it's in. Yeah, okay. that's why I pretty much always do that because then you can be confident that you're definitely in the right place. Because if it goes into the windpipe, the trachea, the windpipe has um, cartilaginous rings that go down it, so you can't feel the pipe if it goes into oh, the windpipe okay. yeah. because it's within those rings of the trachea. Sometimes you can see it really nicely and if you see it pass as well then you don't need to deal. Okay, cool. What we've done is there we've pumped all the fluids into here. We've got the powder in there which will increase her appetite. If she's feeling a bit sick, not maybe eating as much of her normal ration as she would do than I would. While she's scouring I probably would pump her. Yeah, because she'll be losing fluids. Now we've pumped this cow, what is a normal cow that you'd end up, your candidate to be pumped? What yeah. should you look for? So there's loads You'll end up using this pump loads because there's loads of different times that I'd use a pump. Immediately when they've calved, if they're not getting up, not getting eating, then I'd probably pump them with a fresh cow sachet because it's, you get loads of fluids into them, you stimulate their appetite, you really hopefully get them going. If they've ever had to have an operation, like because of a twisted stomach, always immediately pump them after that and then as long as they're eating well then hopefully they won't need to be pumped again if you have like your toxic cow so toxic cows can be due to e coli mastitis or metritis which is really bad infection at the back end i'd definitely would pump those and be pumping them even three times a day maybe even more depending on how sick they are with them you just need to get fluids on board with those guys oak hill did a meeting the other day a red rose meeting that you do every couple of months or whatever it's normally winter time they did a virtual one which was really cool so we were talking about e coli the biggest thing was painkillers anti-inflammatories and fluids yeah. you know they were saying antibiotics for e coli doesn't really do much that's right isn't it yeah the, there's been like constant talk about this i suppose it's because the thing that makes a cow sick with e coli mastitis is the toxins from the bacteria and the toxins from the bacteria are released when the bacteria dies so different people debate that if you kill off more of the bacteria maybe you're creating more of the toxin but generally i think it probably is safest to give antibiotics because because then at least you are stopping any new bacteria multiplying reducing the overall amount of bacteria but the mainstay is anti-inflammatory the fluids stripping her out loads as well to making get that sure that bacteria out so number 118 sixth carver has been pumped a big thank you to susie for agreeing to be on video with me today because i wanted to learn how to do it and i think it was important anyone else watching this if you're a vet or you are a wannabe vet this might be a little bit interesting to you and you might learn something hopefully thank you to susie thank you to oak hill i now have a pump i hope you enjoyed this video hope you learned something please give it a thumbs up subscribe to the youtube channel and we will see you in the next one bye, -bye. So you can see, obviously this cow is holding a cleansing after two days. So uh, you're meant to leave them five days and see if you can get it out. But when they hold the cleansing, they normally get metritis, which is a little bit annoying. Hopefully she might have a bit of an eat or she might just have a bit of a sit down. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I know it's a little bit different and we're talking a bit technical about cows and stuff, but I find it really interesting. Heidi finds it really interesting. Hopefully you guys find it really interesting. Hi, interesting. Very interesting.